All right, guys, what's going on? It's Coach Will, and in this video, have I got a barn burner for you. you. We have got some crazy happenings in the fitness business world right now. So CrossFit just announced literally hours ago that they are raising affiliation fees uh, for a lot of affiliates up to 125%. Uh, at minimum, most affiliates are going to be going up 50%. And this has just created an enormous the internet is going wild right now. Like uh, on all the affiliate groups and all the uh, pages where CrossFit affiliate owners uh, are you know, coming together, uh, the, these threads are just full of reaction. There's just huge reaction. This has probably been the biggest reaction that I've seen from the CrossFit affiliate community in probably, man, eight years, I would say. Probably eight years. I mean, there's been a lot of reaction to a lot of things. I would say it's actually probably been about three four years right really when glassman sold uh crossfit and when there was the fallout with glassman uh on the internet essentially getting canceled that was probably the last big big reaction we got where like everybody came out and had something to say about it and um it's pretty much been since then there's been some grumblings in the community there's been positivity there's been negativity there's been a little bit of everything there's been a big division uh with the new ownership pretty much since they've taken ownership uh when Glassman sold HQ. And uh, I really want to speak about this. I've actually been asked to speak about this. The uh, In our group, the, the Big Little Gyms Pro group, um, where all of our clients are probably, you know, 50% of our clients are CrossFit affiliates or former CrossFit affiliates. And I've been asked by them uh, to kind of give my perspective on this and what my thoughts are. And also like answer some of the logical questions about like whether or not this makes sense. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to preface before I answer that question, like it's somewhat individual and I'm going to go over. My hope is to give go into some of the logic of like, OK, is this valuable? And I'll give my opinion, but I'm going to try to stay very, very objective here. Um, I'm a two time CrossFit affiliate owner myself. I own two affiliates over a decade from 2011 to 2021. And, you know, I, I have very fond memories of starting CrossFit back in the day in 2010, back in the OG days with, uh, you know, in Southern California, the hotbed of CrossFit, where it was growing, where the CrossFit Games was going on, throwing down at my affiliate that I started at in 20, 2010. Um, it's where I made my friends when I was when I started CrossFit back in 2010. When I, I had moved to California, didn't make, didn't have any friends. I was working out and running on the beach, and uh, I decided to walk into CrossFit affiliate, and I had a life changing experience. So much so that I decided to open an affiliate a little bit a little bit after that and then open another affiliate when i moved back to phoenix in 2014 and both of my gyms were very very successful um and i'll, I'll explain a little bit about my, my journey in that like i also when i became an affiliate i never did it with the intention to lean on crossfit as a marketing vehicle right like we wanted to, i wanted to use the crossfit branding i wanted to represent crossfit branding i wanted to use the branding to to more or less be a vehicle to for the methodology you know but I have a marketing background that extends a marketing and entrepreneurship background that extends beyond and prior to me owning CrossFit gyms. Whereas a lot of the gurus in the space only come from every having ever having run a CrossFit gym, and that's what they're giving you their expertise on, is their experience, and their um, you know their experience through running a business as a an affiliate owner or a gym owner. Whereas like for me, I had much bigger and more successful businesses prior to running my gym, and already understood marketing enough to where like I wasn't dependent on CrossFit and I wasn't becoming an affiliate to uh, lean on them for marketing, right? Like I, I was never looking at the CrossFit brand that way. Um, that being said, there are some, there is some inherent value with CrossFit in the brand. And uh, I want to go deep into that. I want to go into the logical stuff in this video. So I'm actually going to, this video, we're going to go deep on a lot of things because there's a lot of people right now that are confused on what to do. I have a lot of gym owners in our program that are, you know, wondering if they should do this because, you know, at minimum, um, most affiliates are paying $3,000 and the, um, notice that has gone out to CrossFit affiliates, uh, looks like this. And it says basically, you know, thank you for being a part of the CrossFit affiliate community. Affiliates always are, uh, are, and always will be the lifeblood of CrossFit. And we have immense gratitude for your continued commitment. We previously shared our goal of growing to 30 million members by 2030. Now I want to, I want to approach that real quick here because, you know, it's 2024 in a month, it's December. And, um, you know, if we just break down, I'm, I'm kind of curious where this 30 million member mark comes from to begin with. Okay. Cause if we just do some math and, and I'm going to use, I'm going to use my sample, um, of since we started big little gems, this company, I've done discovery calls 
with uh, 1,200 plus gyms. And I would say probably 60% of those are CrossFit affiliates or affiliate style gyms, right? So, you know, several hundred, right? Um, now that's not the whole contingency of affiliates, but that's a big enough sample to probably draw some conclusions from. And every discovery call we've done, we've asked the gym owners to, say, to let us know where they currently stand with their member base. How many clients do you currently have? And we need to, we want to know that because we want to know where we're starting at. How can we, and what other goals are? What are we, what are your, what is your current situation? Where do you want to be? And, um, and in aggregating that data, data, and this is not off the top of my, this is, this is ballparking it. This isn't, I haven't actually gone in like, you know, averaged out this, but I would say 90 plus percent of the affiliates I talk to are, have, have less than hundred clients. Um, only 10, 10 or more have more than hundred clients. And then, um, it's maybe 3% of the gyms I talk to have more than 200 clients. I would say the average CrossFit affiliate probably has like 70 members. 70, and when I say members, I mean like recurring revenue members, people that are paying some sort of monthly membership. And um, there's, okay, so if we use that math, let's say we inflate that number. Say we even say the average affiliate has, has 150 members even, right? So say, you know, even though we know it's not 150, it's definitely not 150, but I'm just gonna say it's 150. And we multiply that times what they're claiming, how many affiliates there are, which is they're saying there's 15,000 affiliates, right? Now keep in mind, CrossFit affiliates, like there's a percentage of them that are uh, schools, like educational affiliates that are, um, cause CrossFit has a good percentage of affiliates, probably, I don't know what the exact number is, but I'm sure it's sent someone correct, can correct me on this if someone at HQ knows, but the, those are, there, there's special deals with like school clubs that can be affiliates, right? And those, what are, what are those, those are gonna have like a, a handful of kids, right? Uh, 20, 30, 40, maybe 50 kids, right? And uh, so who knows what percentage of this 15,000 are like special use case affiliates. I think maybe, you know, you could say 10,000 of the affiliates are like real small businesses, maybe even less. I don't know where, you know, and we could probably go through the CrossFit affiliate list and all this stuff. There's also a lot of affiliates that like are big box gyms that aren't even CrossFit gyms. They just happen to pay for a CrossFit affiliate because they want the brand reach, right? So there's like big box gyms now that will open up an affiliate inside and the CrossFit affiliate is just kind of packaged in with the rest of the membership. And I know this because we have gyms that do this. We have big box gyms that pay for a CrossFit affiliate and they're not really doing CrossFit in there. It's not the same uh, small box affiliate experience that we're talking about here. So it's not really relevant either. So I don't know what percentage of actual affiliates in that 15,000 that CrossFit likes to claim are like real, but let's just go ahead and like, let's go with the conservative math. Like let's say all 150, all 15,000 CrossFit affiliates have 150 members. Um, we're just gonna do some quick math here. So 15,000 times 150. Oh, I don't know what I'm, I did bad math there. 115,000, 15,000, times 150. Uh, if we do that math, we have two, uh, 2,250,000 members, active members, and that's, rounding up to 150 members and that's assuming all 150 or all 15,000 CrossFit affiliates have that many members which is not the case right because some of these are like special use case affiliates that aren't the typical small box gym that needs to make money so if you're sitting at a little over 2 million i don't know how you get to 30 million and i don't know where they're they're not even in the they're not even in the neighborhood right um so, and we're talking, they're talking about doing that in the next six years, you're at 2024, right? So, um, you know, when I see that, I'm like, okay, this is a little bit of, a little bit of puffery there. Uh, you know, and I'm looking at my, at my screen here, if I'm looking down, not the cameras, cause I'm looking at my screen here as I go through this and do the math and look at some of these posts. But, um, you know, it says to do that, we need to innovate and reinvest in the business to ensure we attract more people to CrossFit driving a greater number of leads into your gyms and protecting and preserving the brand in multiple ways. So what they're talking about there is recently CrossFit made a post saying that they're going to basically like drive traffic through their website, right? Like, and they're saying that they've generated some, I forget what it was recently. They made a post and you could see a lot of this stuff, right? Over the last couple of years, they've been doing things that have been like indicators that they're probably going to be making an ask soon, right? But they've been trying to show value. And it's, it's interesting. Like, so I've got a, a business, a, a business background, an entrepreneurship background outside of gyms. 
So I've started some other businesses and I've grown and scaled some other businesses and sold some other businesses. And uh, I'm very familiar with the tech world. I've spent some time in Silicon Valley. I have friends who make money in Silicon Valley. And there's a thing they do in Silicon Valley in the tech world. It's a, it's a pretty typical play when companies are acquired. So like what a, co a company will do is they'll see a business that the value hasn't been extracted from. In the case here, it's CrossFit. And they see a business that's being run pretty simply, right? Like CrossFit when it was acquired was basically a team of a dozen people in an office in Santa Cruz. And uh, it was really run like a small business, but it was doing like 30, $40 million a year in revenue. And they said, oh, wow, like we can, you know, and so when they acquired it, they, they acquired CrossFit. I think the, the amount it was acquired for, I don't know if it's been openly disclosed anywhere, but rumor has it, it's somewhere in the neighborhood of $200 million, right? And so it was acquired by this firm uh, that has roots in, uh, the, in tech, right? In Silicon Valley, like the CEO is, was a, a former, um, I forget what position he had at Oracle, um, Eric Rosa, but he was from Oracle, right? And like, these are, you know, whenever you hear the, whenever you see like a C-suite executive from Silicon Valley, you know, whether it be a CEO, a CMO, chief marketing officer, officer chief finance officer, chief uh, operations officer, like these aren't people that are necessarily brought in because of the best operators in the world or the best marketers in the world or the best financiers in the world. They are people brought in specifically for acquisition. They get a company, they know how to assemble they know to assemble the pieces of the business from the executive branch to get it acquired, right? It's more about numbers than it is about like actual real world results, right? It's all about the evaluation. And so when this, when CrossFit was acquired back in 2022, I actually said this to my wife. I was like, CrossFit's going to get flipped, right? They're going to buy this for $200,000. And what they're looking at is they're looking at a company like Orange Theory who got an evaluation at a billion dollars back just a couple of years ago. And they're like, okay. We can buy this for two hundred thousand dollars. We can do the tech, the tech roll up, we'll call it here, and we can exit for a billion dollars, right? Now that hasn't happened yet, but that's where this is going, and this is kind of the first step you see that indicates that like this is the game plan that these com that these um, acquisition companies follow, these these VC companies follow, where it's like buy a company, and then what you do is you go and provide all the value, right? You go and like start to build some infrastructure. And you start to provide value. And the way that CrossFit's done this the last couple of years is they said, okay, we're going to do it. You know, and you provide the value in a way that's like nominal cost, nominal increase in cost, right? So what has CrossFit done the last couple of years for affiliates? They said, okay, we're going to do regional meetings, right? meetings, right? So they've employed, you know, a handful of regional reps in every area. And they are now running regional meetings like a handful of times a year. And um, it's just, and then basically what they're doing at those regional meetings is like they're allowing like vendors to come in and speak and they're selling the, the vendors have to be in the affiliate, um, they call it approved affiliate vendor list, right? So like, if you're not approved, you can't come in. If you're not one of the cool kid vendors that are paying CrossFit, like whatever, hundreds of thousands of dollars a year to come in and talk to the affiliates, you know, you can't come in. So it's, it's pretty biased the information you're getting at these things. I've heard it's valuable and I've heard it's a cool experience. I heard that, you know, that it's run like pretty well to where like, it's really about the stories. Now they're doing a very good job at these of making it more about, um, you know, pulling the emotion out, right? It's, I've heard a lot. Is that like, oh, you know, a lot of gym stuff and uh, relating with each other. And that's awesome, right? But understand like that is exactly what they want, right? Because the, the play in a tech business, tech acquisition or flip scenario is uh, buy, the buy an undervalued company or buy a value company that doesn't, that's lacking value, add the value, right? And like, so do all the things that should have been done all along, right? Add these things and then um, get adoption, right? Get people uh, indoctrinated as really sticky clients, right? By doing that, by doing the, essentially the, the local regional meetings, they've got like increased adoption from the affiliates. Right. Um, and then you do some other little things that are like kind of just tactical, pragmatic upgrades that seem like a big deal, but are really not right. And one of those things that they did recently is they've kind of made a move with their website, kind of like from the marketing angle that like a lot of franchises follow. Right. So but what they did and I'll break this down and I'm very familiar with this because we work with a lot of other, we work with a lot of gyms that are part of fitness franchises. And we actually work for some fitness franchises too. We actually build our systems for our, what we do at big little gyms are like perfect for like franchises to plug and play to, for their whole marketing system. And so we work with a few franchises and we're familiar with how this works. And we're familiar with how the ones, the big franchises work, which is what CrossFit's starting to try to model. Right, so CrossFit's trying to model what like what Orange Theory and F45 do with their website, right? They're making it so you as affiliate, if you're on the affiliate map, you have a little mini micro website on their site. 
and CrossFit recently with, you know, to kind of, you could tell that they're moving towards this ask of like more money because they recently decided to make an email to say, Hey, we're doing this for you, even though you didn't ask for it. Right. We're giving you this website. Right. And they said, Oh, we got, uh, I forget what they said, but they said something like they had 2 million leads or some crazy amount of leads. Right. And, um, which again, like who knows where that comes from because we work with several hundred affiliates and we've, all of them were like, yeah, we've never seen any leads come from CrossFit or the website. Like we've never seen any, I don't know what they're, where they're making these numbers up at. Um, but a lot of, you know, gym owners, what's interesting is like gym owners, like on a level of sophistication, as far as business people goes, like, and no offense, some of you guys are great. There are some really, I've met some of some very skilled, like business acumen type people as gym owners, but it's rare. Most gym owners are mom and pops. They love fitness. They don't know business. If you tell them it's good, they're probably going to believe you. If you tell them, Hey, here's a, you know, we've got 10, 2 million leads and we're going to build you this and you're going to get a piece of it. They're going to go, Oh, that's awesome. Thank you so much. You know what I mean? Like they don't know the difference. Right. And so that value starts to get built in their mind. And then here we are with this big ask. Right. Um, and it's all part of the, the plan, right? It's all part of the plan because CrossFit bought this company for, or not CrossFit, but this, this, this company was CrossFit was acquired by whoever for whatever, $200 million. Right. And the reason why private equity companies and investment companies buy companies is not to hold them to just be the worth the same money in a few years. They're going to buy the business. They're going to get some, they're going to get the cash flow out of the business and they're also going to flip it for a profit. Right. And, uh, CrossFit's now been owned by this private equity company for, uh, five, four years, roughly now. And if CrossFit's revenues are somewhere in the 30 to $50 million market, it's safe to say they've come pretty close to, um, receiving enough cash flow back what they paid for it. But the thing is that I, where I think this is coming from is most VC money, especially based on a Silicon Valley, this tech world, um, is coming from a lot of regional banks. Um, and there's interest on that debt, right? It's not like the people, not like the VC, it, most of the VC money is borrowed money, right? They're leveraging bank capital, bank debt. And these are, um, adjustable rate loans that are based off the prime rate. And back when CrossFit was acquired in 2020, the prime rate was, I think, negative. I think it was as low as it was going to go. It was zero, right? And the banks were marking the rates up like 2% off of that, right? They're making 2%. So they're probably paying 2%. It was probably deferred interest too. A lot of VC capital, like they'll have deals to like defer interest for the first couple of years, whatever the case may be. Um, but now interest rates, prime rates are like five, six, seven percent. Uh, regional banks are probably six, seven percent. And the bank's making a, a markup on that of one or two percent. So it's safe to say the VC firms that were part of this acquisition deal are now paying, you know, you know, eight, nine percent of this debt, right? That's probably still tens, if not hundreds of millions of dollars to acquire CrossFit, right? Because that's one of the things they put here in this uh in this when, we, when I read this this post. Um going back to it here says, despite infl inflation and higher costs, which have risen by an average of 74%, CrossFit has not uh, raised its prices for 11 years. Now that is fair, right? It's like CrossFit hasn't raised their price in 11 years, right? Um, you know, it, and sure, if you know, if you if you average out over 11 years, uh, a 5% increase year over year, you know, on say $3,000, it's safe to say you'd probably be at you know, close to that $4,500 mark anyways. Right. So, you know, that, that's, that's, that's fair. Right. Um, in that regard. Now, some of the justification here in regards to like average, you know, increase of 74% in cost. Now, totally, you know, they're saying like inflation and higher costs. Right. And a lot of this is infrastructure and most of it is this interest based debt. Right. That's the thing. Cause why would it, you know, yeah, inf inflation has been high, but not 74% in three years high. It's been like 23, 24% high. That additional cost is, was their own doing their choice to, um, you know, build more infrastructure out, build more systems out, right. Things like that. And yes, those things eventually do need to, need to be passed along for the comp to the customer. Right. Um, but you know, it's not necessarily, I don't think you necessarily have to justify things that way. I, you know, that's, you know, a lot of that is their own interest in debt, right? To some degree, that's probably what most of it is in order to sustain a healthy business and invest in resources to achieve our goals. You know, I don't like the wording here, um, like sustain a healthy business, right? Like if we do the math, uh, if, you know, say you have, if even 10,000, 
let's just say even half of the affiliates are paying the three thousand dollars so say 7500 affiliates are paying three thousand dollars currently they're generating twenty two million five hundred thousand dollars in revenue per year right and crossfit's still a pretty lean business they uh they're they're overheads are nowhere near that. I don't know. I don't can't see their PL. I don't know. You know, if their PL is high, it's because man, they've got a problem, right? And maybe it is like this interest that they're paying, right? That's that's what I think it might come down to. If they are being squeezed, it's interest that either that or this is totally, you know, uh, something to make you feel to justify it, right? Which like if you're gonna do a price increase and we helped a lot of gyms do price increases, like don't say things that you can shoot through, holes through, right? Because it's like saying things in order to sustain a healthy business. Like, man, you guys already have a healthy business. All right. Like, you know, and uh, invest in resources to achieve our goals. Right. And so going back to the website thing, right. The reason why that's a problem, like if, they're, if that's what they're going to tell us, oh, we're going to build a website for you. Right. Is like, that doesn't even work well for franchises. Most franchises that most gyms that are part of franchises we have a lot of them that come to us because like the stuff they get from the franchise doesn't work like it doesn't work like being on like the affiliate map and like a little mini site there like that stuff doesn't that doesn't generate leads like it doesn't work like it often just gets a bunch of spam right and that's you know crossfit's talking about like two million plus leads that they've gotten from that or whatever the number was a lot of that's probably spam <laughs> like you know how much that's actually real i don't know you know it's um it just doesn't it doesn't it doesn't work like it's not optimized well for lead generation it's just not it's not effective, right? And, uh, and the reason why they're trying to do this because CrossFit wants to, the reason why they want to do that is the same reason the franchises do that because it gives them control over their um, over their franchisee. Or in this case, the with CrossFit, the affiliate. If they start requiring you to run traffic through their stuff, you can never leave them because you don't own the rights to your traffic. You don't hold the traffic source. So I'm very weary of that, especially as someone that has like helped Th you know, thousands of affiliates in the last handful of years resolve this issue with stuff that we know works on the ground floor. You know, when franchises, for example, trying to model CrossFit, trying to model franchises with this, which is I think what they're trying to do. It's also the only way they're ever going to make any money on the flip, right? Is to try to get a bigger evaluation by moving more towards like a franchise, pseudo franchise model, still an affiliate model, because really. CrossFit isn't selling you a franchise, right? A franchise is supposed to give you all system, systems for all five uh, parts of your business. Marketing, sales, operations, fulfillment, and finance, right? Those are the five facets of business. And when you buy a franchise, you get systems for all five. When you're an affiliate, you're really just paying to be, um, you're just paying for, you're basically paying a royalty to use the name. And then anything else they give you is really just a bonus on top, right? And I've done a video about this in the past. I've done a video on this before about how, um, the CrossFit affiliation of $3,000 is like, it's not a bad deal because like you're getting used the CrossFit name, a global brand. It does have some brand recognition. It does have some SEO to it. Um, and it does rank decently well. And, and also the, the way that, that uh, Google has moved in the last couple of years, June of 2022, Google made a big SEO update and it kind of shook up the internet. And we knew this because we worked with several hundred clients and we monitored this stuff. And we were like, oh, wow, it was like almost overnight. Like it, everybody's rankings changed. And it took us like a month or two to review all the data and analyze all the data and figure out like, what did Google change? Because Google doesn't tell you. When they change the algorithm, they don't tell you. What they changed was they gave a big lean towards like bigger global brands. And like um, the, the the company that won out the most in the fitness world was Anytime Fitness. Anytime Fitness is like a franchise model, similar to CrossFit, where they sell a lot of franchises. And they're small franchises and they cost much more than a, than a CrossFit affiliate. And um, it was interesting is as we began to analyze different markets, look at rankings in every market where we did, you know, we did, we analyzed search terms like gyms, fitness, gym near me, anytime fitness went to the top, right? Like they really capitalized on this. Their, their franchise holders had to be super happy because they probably didn't even expect that. Second, were like your other big box gyms were like planet fitness, things like that. And then in the mix also were things like CrossFit gyms, right? Um, things like that. They, 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 they did pretty well and they benefited from that. Right. Um, but since, figuring out that algorithm, we've seen a lot of independent gyms figure out how to crawl their way back into that, right? Through authority, reputation, search SEO, things that we do with their website, backend things, things like that that optimize for position that will overcome someone just having a big brand attached to them, right? We've, we've had a lot of success with it, right? So we've seen that adjust, you know? Um, 
so there's some things there that like, you know, they have a, had a nominal increase in cost for CrossFit that they've um, begun to show value in the last couple of years. And that's the intention, right? Like build the value first and then make the ask, right? Versus like make the ask and then say you're going to give value and no one would pay that, right? And uh, the thing is only like a percentage of affiliate owners are really seeing any benefit from this stuff, right? These, these regional meetings, a couple hundred affiliates go, right? And most of the regional regionals, regions like they really, the reps aren't even really doing a good job of getting people together. Like I'm here in the Southwest and I know several, you know, th a thousand affiliate owners in the States here and in the Southwest, the ones I know here in Phoenix, the Phoenix area, like they don't even go to them. They don't even know where they are. Um, I think they're based in Colorado and it's like no one from Arizona is going to Colorado. You can't just drive there. It's like a trek through the friggin' tallest mountains, some of the tallest mountains in the world. Um, you know, and then no one's going to fly to those things. Right. The, you know, so, and then they're doing like some zoom meetings, uh, which I, I've been on, uh, which a handful of people show up for. Um, so a lot of this stuff, like there isn't value being seen, you know, like, because, um, cross is also trying to keep their hands clean in regards to like what they provide to affiliates to protect their like royalty agreement. Right. Because in the world of like licensing, when you're talking about like franchises and and royalty agreements and trademark agreements, which the CrossFit affiliate agreement is really just a trademark royalty agreement, right? Like in their terminology, they don't have to give you marketing stuff. They don't have really all you are getting when you pay for a CrossFit.com affiliation or CrossFit affiliation is you're getting to utilize their brand name, right? And they're going to go, they should be out there promoting and building value in that brand name. Right, that's what they should be out there doing. They should be investing in that money in that because that's what you're seeing value in. Now, if they're not out there doing that, then you're not getting your value. But they don't have to go and like do your marketing for you at your specific location, right? You need to still go do that, right? Um, and that's not just like propping up, you know, uh, a CrossFit affiliate map, like a micro site. That's not gonna. That's not gonna do it. None of that works. It doesn't work for franchises. It doesn't work for any big box companies. It, it just doesn't work. Um, and so. Um, with regards to that, you know, the, the CrossFit affiliate agreement, it's like, you know, they're raising the price now because they're, they're basically asking for the value they've been giving the last couple of years. And it's really, man, if I just go through some of the comments, you know, and some of the, some of the groups here, um, you know, this is in one of the CrossFit Facebook groups. There's numerous posts, um, here, this guy's posting here and he's got 242 comments and this is within three hours. And if I just go in here, it is not, um, it is not necessarily positive, right? Uh, this guy here, how did, how do they raise rates? Now he's being facetious here. Uh, there's no way their expenses have gone up in all this time. Correct. Like they do need to adjust for that. Fair enough. That being said, 50% is a big jump, right? Um, and then, uh, I got my email too. running a smaller garage fleet. I could say, uh, I will no longer be affiliate. I hate this to happen at this point. Not to play devil's advocate, um, but in 2012, we first opened, we were charged $100 a month. Um, and they're also saying, like, uh, you have to be an L2 affiliate owner. So not, and I guess you get a credit towards your L2. Now, I don't think this is bad necessarily. CrossFit should have done this a while ago because the L1 is fine if you want to be a recreational CrossFit coach and like get some experience. But, you know, the L2 is the actual, is the actual most practical, uh, um, uh, it's not a cert. What do they call it? Training, I guess, or whatever, because they don't call it a cert. You're not certified. You're not a certified coach for CrossFit until you get like an L3, I think. Um, but whatever they want to call it, the, the title, right? The L2, that experience when I went to the L2, I actually learned some practical things that applied to running a gym. I would, I took my L2 in 2013 or 2014 and it was great. I really liked it. And I, you know, every affiliate owner should be an L2. I kind of agree with that. But they're making you pay for this, right? They're giving you, I think, like a fifteen hundred dollar credit, and I believe they're also they've also raised the pricing on their certifications. And if they haven't, they're going to, right? So I think in total it'll probably cost you know the forty five hundred dollars for the affiliation, and then whatever the L two costs, the L one and the L two, which they get a re renewals on that, right? They're getting, which I believe if you have your L two, you don't have to renew your L one as long as you renew your L two, but you're paying that every five years, right? And I'm guessing if they're at a hundred thousand dollars now, still, I don't know what the rate is for an L two. Uh, but they'll probably go to 1500. I don't see why they wouldn't. Um, especially since it's also where a large amount of the revenue comes from is from, uh, renewals on, uh, L ones and L twos, because I think the rate of new L ones and L twos has slowed considerably over the years. Um, you know, if I keep going on the thread here, Jade says 125 increase, I think I'm out 13 years of feed paid. What I, 
Uh, most of what they provide is worthless. Uh, word of mouth trumps all, and it drives 99% of business, business at least for all of us. Um, yeah, and at the same time, most affiliates don't make any money. You can't rely on word of mouth alone. That being said, CrossFit HQ, is like they still don't provide any value in this way. It's not what they do. They're not a marketing company. Um, you know, at the end of the day, um, if you're one of the gyms that happens to be profitable on word of mouth alone, just know you're in the minority. Um, really doing having good marketing systems in place. And we know because we do it. We have gyms that come to us, CrossFit gyms that come to us all the time with been stuck at 60 members for years, like a decade, right? And no matter what CrossFit's done and posted on the internet and done for marketing, it's never changed any of it. And then we come in in like three weeks and their gym starts getting like five, 10 members a month consistently, mostly organic doing, you know, things that the gym owner's not doing because they're just relying on word of mouth, right? Like, Word of mouth is essentially hope marketing, right? If you're just hoping that everybody just keeps talking about you, and that's great, and that's, you should do that, but word of mouth should almost be like the cherry on top, right? And as you generate new cus more customers, you get more word of mouth, right? Big Little Gems, my company grows by word of mouth, but I'm not, rely I'm not relying on that because at any given moment, if everybody feels a certain kind of way about my stuff and they're no longer telling everybody or people don't want to share, then I have to go out there and proactively market my business. So I'm always proactively marketing my business, and I'm not waiting for the day that word of mouth to dry, to dry up, right? Um, let's see, uh, and Vince says, I'm just gonna throw this out there. What added value are we getting from this increase? Well, the added value is supposed to be the things that they've been doing the last couple of years that no one's really using, right? Like, um, that's, the, that's what they're, and I'm saying that somewhat facetiously is they're trying to say, oh, we've done all these things for you recently. Now we want to ask you to pay this price, right? Uh, Marty says, bring Greg back. Um, you know, I love Greg. I'm a friend of Greg's. I've been to Greg's house, house here in Arizona where I live. He lives around the corner from me. I've been to Greg's house. I've been to his house in, in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, and spent time with him and his family. But Greg didn't want to run Cro Greg didn't want to run CrossFit the, at the size it was. It's almost like an accident it got as big as it was. And it's only because they had like an evangelical leader like Greg. But Greg doesn't want to do this. And I in like I'm not necessarily speaking for Greg he's never said that but he's said a lot of things uh like that not just to me personally but he said that openly right like if you if you run into Greg Glassman at the games and ask him if he wants that job back he will tell you he doesn't um you know he'll, he'll tell you he doesn't um and I love Greg and uh but I don't think that's what he wants to be doing um you know, and so and then when you say, I understand the frustration of the rate hike, what's HQ's plan to spend the money to actually help the affiliates? This isn't the U.S. government where we can lose $6 billion and just go. Um, getting a little political there, but uh, I kind of like it. Um, yeah, you know what I mean? Like, at the end of the day, most of this, no matter what they say, it's all about generating more revenue for an exit. The, comp the private equity and VC companies that own CrossFit which, you know, they appointed a person and they've done a good job of appointing people that we all trust, right? Eric Rosa was a CrossFit guy. I think he owned an affiliate, but he, he worked for Oracle and he was a part of a big acquisition at Oracle and made who knows how many tens of millions and hundreds of millions of dollars in that exit. And that's his job. And so, you know, he's coming in to move things around to exit it, right? Like to, you know, and with that, they are going to, ultimately probably provide more value to affiliates, but like the end goal of doing that is to retain you, to get you to pay, to get you to stay more. Ultimately at the end of the day, like when you're going a business, when you're acquiring a business or you start a business and you're building it for acquisition or exit. And I know because I built my businesses that way, all my businesses that I've built have always been with the intention to one day move on from it because I'm going to be real with you guys. And a lot of you guys probably don't want to hear this or probably haven't thought about this, but like if you're a business owner, you only, you only go out of business three ways. There's only three ways that you go out of business. Um, you either you know, you either go out of business, like you go bankrupt, you, you lose everything, you know, like beyond your control or number two, you, um, you die owning the business, right? Like you continue to own the business until you died, which very few people do not. Most people die at an age where they're no longer working, right? Most, very few people still even work when they're dead, right? Like, you know, um, you know, they do, it's not really a business anymore. It's like a hobby side gig or their family runs it. They're not, they're not majority stakeholders in the business anymore. And then there's a third way, which is how most people prefer to exit. And I'm sure the VC comp, the VC private equity company that owns CrossFit HQ 
in me, in, in me owning my business, like I would prefer to exit while I'm still alive and not go bankrupt, which means selling it. And ideally for some multiplier of what it's worth, right? Because you've built something of value that, uh, and by value, it's valuable to the next, the reason why another company would pay a premium in a multiplier, multiplier if CrossFit does a good job and can get revenue to $200 million, which is probably their goal because they got $2 million, $200 million re uh, revenue. They're probably looking right now nominal evaluations because the markets are down with lending being down are like 4% or 4, 4X. So if they got CrossFit to say $200 million and sold it tomorrow, they probably would get $800 million and they paid $200 million for it, right? Now, say, you know, the market turns up in three years. We see an economic boom, lending goes up, they, uh, they lower rates and actually... There's a part of me that thinks maybe this might happen next year because 2024, there's if you if you're into personal finance at all and you follow, follow follow any of the personal finance gurus and people that really track the markets and what's going on in the markets, obviously we've had inflation the last few years. They've jacked rates up, right? And this gets a little bit of political when we talk about this because it, it has to because it's the name of the game, right? And it's just like whatever your stance is on this stuff, politically right, left, whatever. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about if you're in office and you want to get reelected, what do you do, right? Obviously, like you got to solve this problem of like the economic crash that happened in 2020, which whether or not that's conspiracy is a whole nother conversation. But and by saying that, I'm not alluding to that. It is. We don't know. Right. But obviously, they let some things happen that tanked economy that allowed us to pump a bunch of cash into the economy that naturally creates a rise in interest rates. And if you're trying to stay in office, you don't want interest rates to be high when you're re be going to be re trying to get reelected, or at least your party is trying to get reelected, right? Whatever party you're on, this is both sides do this, right? What you do is you would overcorrect a little bit, so that way in the last year, as you get you go for reelection or your party goes for reelection, you can lower the rates a little bit. They and they also are going to bring in what's called quantitative easing. Quantitative easing is a fancy word for printing more money, right? So they're talking about quantitative easing in 2024, printing even more money. And then they're talking about lowering interest rates. And if you look at what happened in 2021 and 2020, when they did that to recover from COVID, it created a, a, a frenzy, right? And it also uh, jacked evaluations of companies up like two, three X. There were companies that weren't worth anything that were going for like 10 X evaluations, right? So if you're a, 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 a VC company like CrossFit, uh, and this is totally me saying this is totally me just spitballing here. I don't know if this is what they're trying to do. This is just guess, but it, you know, if I, you know, I like to think with my investor hat on, I've bought a lot of companies, looked into this. I've studied a lot of companies way bigger than CrossFit over the years and like how these things go down. And generally, like if you know an opportunity for exit is coming about, you start to get your ducks in a row. You sort of get your ducks in a row from a perspective of like building it to sell, right? You start to pump the evaluation, right? Because if you can get revenue up, knowing that evaluations are going to go up, you get like a one plus one equals three effect, right? So say CrossFit right now is doing between all their, you know, uh, licensing uh, of um, certification programs and and uh, like different certification programs, L1, L2, things like that. And all the affiliation dues, say they're doing $50 million a year right now. And the evaluation with the market right now is 4X. That means they're looking at, you know, pretty much breaking even on their original acquisition, right? They pay $200 million. If it's $50 million a year times four, that means they're going to get $20, 20 million on the exit, right? They're not trying to do that. But if they know next year, the market's going to go wild again because of quantitative easing and a reduction in interest rates, because they don't have to reduce interest rates, interest rates back down to like four, 3% like they had them. If they just reduce interest rates down 1% from seven to six, it's going to create quite a bit of activity in the market. And knowing that, it's going to flip back the other way because if you pump a bunch of cash into the economy and lower interest rates and everybody starts spending and borrowing again, what's going to happen after that is it's going to swing back the other way even worse than it is right now. We're going to see even higher interest rates. Interest rates will go to 10% after we come back from that because it has to because you have to offset for how much cash was pumped in the economy, right? And when they pump cash into the economy, it ultimately all ends up in the hands of the top, like one and two, you know, top 1%. So, you know, it's only... <laughs> one way to go about this, right? At the end of the day. So um, that's what I'm thinking is either they're, pre they're preparing for that um, or this was just their plan all along. It might as well just be their plan all along because um, I'm sure when they bought it, they probably, most 
uh, VC and private equity companies when they make these uh, deals to acquire companies, it's usually like a five to 10 year exit strategy, right? And uh, it was 2020, I believe that CrossFit was acquired by this holdings company. And it's been, I mean, we're entering year four, right? So, and if they think that, hey, we can get out in year five in 2024 with uh, if the market swings back the other way with the election year with quantitative easing and a reduction in interest rates, people start spending, things go wild again. CrossFit might be able to see a, five, a seven, eight, nine, ten x evaluation. So if they can get say ten x and get revenues up to say seventy or eighty million dollars by increasing the total revenue by this price hike, right? Because say say CrossFit does their math and they they've already done their math because you know if you're gonna raise it raised, you're gonna do your math. You're gonna say okay, what do we project cancellations are going to be? And they're probably saying something like okay, it's gonna be you know it's gonna be let's just go ahead and do some quick math here, but say we've got, you know, 15,000 affiliates, you know, paying $3,000. We'll just do that math. I don't think that, again, I don't think 15,000 affiliates are paying $3,000. I think you have a lot of them paying 500 bucks, a thousand bucks, 2000 bucks from back in the day. So we'll just use that easy math. But say it's 45 and it's, this is probably pretty close to what CrossFit's revenue is with all their certifications as well, right? Figure that they've got, you know, tens of thousands, Probably a hundred thousand po- people out there that have got CrossFit L ones, and over you know every every five years they have to renew. So whatever, you got tens of thousands of people you, every year renewing and doing their certifications and getting their um, L one and L twos. It's probably they're probably I think they're in this fifty thousand fifty million. I've heard that CrossFit's revenue hovers in that fifty million. It might even be higher. But say they're okay with losing ten percent of this, right, or fifteen percent of this even. So times 085 right? Well, actually 45 million. So we're doing the math the wrong way. So say 15,000 affiliates and say they're okay with losing 10% of this. So, or 15% of this. So 15,000 affiliates times 0.85, which is 15% reduction is 12,750 affiliates. So if you take that number, remember we got 45 million before and we multiply it by $4,500, the new price, we go up to 57 million, right? So by losing 15% of our client base, we actually increase our revenue from 45 to 57. What's that? What's the increase on that? 45 but to 57, that's a hundred, let's see, 45, 57 divided by 45. Yeah, 20, you, you actually increase your revenue by 26%, right? So by losing 50% of your clients, you increase your overall revenue 26%. That's a big jump, right? Now, even if CrossFit goes to 20% loss in clients, they're still probably gonna make 20%, right? So they've done this math. They're okay with you leaving, right? They don't care. Like we've already done the math and like, okay, we already accounted for you leaving, go ahead. It's fine. Those who wanna stay and pay can keep staying and paying, right? Because they're gonna still get what they want, right? So that's a little bit of what's happening there. Now, let's get into some of the logical stuff about like CrossFit and like does this, you know, does being a CrossFit affiliate from like, Let's break it. Let's break it down to some practical marketing stuff, like down to the weeds of like rubber meets the road. Does being a CrossFit affiliate, having CrossFit in your name, benefit you when people are searching for businesses uh, to do business with that are fitness providers, right? Because at the end of the day, Google has more traffic on it than any other pl- any other social media platform, any social media platform, any other website in the world, right? And when someone looks for a service based business locally, they uh, they're gonna Google it, right? That's what everybody does. And five to 10 years ago, when CrossFit was much, much hotter than it is now, um, is maybe just millennials that were kind of coming of age that use Google, right? And like someone older than you, if they're in their 50s, 60s, wasn't using Google yet. You know what I mean? Like they were still, they were still getting adoption in the early 2010s. Now though, post COVID, everybody's got an iPhone, right? Everybody's got an iPhone. There's no more flip phones. You know, your grandma doesn't have a flip phone anymore. She's got an iPhone, she knows how to use it. And she's Googling stuff. Um, everybody of every age, and there's a whole new generation, Gen Z coming up as well, that they're Googling stuff too. So there's probably four times as many people just Googling stuff as there was 10 years ago. And what does someone who's looking for like a plumber, for example, do? They don't ask their friends anymore. They just go to Google and see who shows up at the top and who's got the best reviews and they do business with them. If uh, they're looking for an electrician, same thing. If they, um, you know, if they're looking for a restaurant, that's what they do. And it's no different with, with gyms, right? Ultimately, people are going to Google search gyms and uh, it's going to show the best gyms around them, right? And the, and the largest volume search 
in the fit in fitness and we know this because we've looked at this with thousands of gyms on google analytics clients of ours that we set up their marketing stuff they uh the largest search is always gyms gyms and then gyms near me and then like crossfit might be the fifth or sixth or seventh one right for a lot of gyms if they're if they're a crossfit gym and uh crossfit gyms tend to rank pretty decently in the search they'll be in the top if they, it depends on how long they've been around right and that's what i was going to say is like actually most gyms like it has less to do do with what you're called and i would say it has far more to do with how long your business has been on google and then also uh things like your review your reputation your authority uh search engine optimization optimization on your website things that demonstrate authority on your website which like most website all actually all of them guys i'm just gonna go ahead and like just put this out there that like all these companies these software companies uh that serve crossfit gyms that do the gym management software all offering like websites now build absolute junk right like stuff is like not optimized like uh, i i can shoot holes through it and if anybody wants me to feel free to jump on a call with me i'll show you exactly what's going on with that because this is something we've been doing for a long time and i put my heart into soul heart and soul into building quality um, stuff for our clients and one of the things we do and what you work with us is we set that up for you we build a website and it's got a lot going into it from that that perspective and um we see all the errors on this stuff and um at the end of the day like it affects your business you know and it's doing those things that you know if they're done right between the other things i mentioned with like authorities reviews all these different things that's what's going to get you to the top of Google, right? And uh, so let's take a look at some some information here based on a few gyms. I'm just going to pull up here. So uh, first, this is Google Trends. Um, I'm just pulling it up. And uh, I did the search here. So the word CrossFit is in red here. And you can see it's the biggest graph by far. And this is since 2004, which is just, I mean, CrossFit pretty much hit the mainstream in 2004. Uh, went, CrossFit went global in like 2005, like they started doing affiliations. It might've been earlier than that. I'm not sure when Greg actually started taking other affiliates and uh, commercializing it, if you will. Uh, 2009, I would say is when it kind of went mainstream. 2012 is when it kind of boomed, right? So here, you know, you can see the word CrossFit in red here is it peaked in 2013, right? July, 2013. And then it saw a pretty solid drop off year over year uh, until now. And it's pretty much it's still on a downward trend. It's slowed a little bit um, as it kind of has hit the, the bottom of the trough here and hasn't ticked up. And most of these little spikes are just seasonal spikes, right? You can look and see like every, you know, every second quarter pretty much spikes again because that's, you know, when most people start getting out. And you can see that that search for just CrossFit generically dwarfs the searches. Like these little blue lines you can barely see and yellow lines down here are CrossFit gym and CrossFit near me, which are more likely to be what someone looking specifically for a CrossFit gym near them is going to type in, right? Because the word CrossFit could be from any number of searches unrelated to them searching for a CrossFit gym. It could just be someone, you know, uh, who's already a CrossFitter looking, you know, for uh, latest CrossFit games updates, right? Things like that, right? Now, if I take get rid of this one here, and just look at CrossFit and CrossFit near me. Let's see how these things have kind of, uh, you know, surged. Okay, so CrossFit gym in and of itself kind of followed the trajectory of the other bigger CrossFit term. Peaked in July 2013 and then really fell off hard. Uh, and then it's continued. And now it's kind of flatlined, right? It's, it's stable, if anything, at the bottom here for the blue line. Um, but it is literally, uh, you know, this is 25%, this is 100%. Uh, CrossFit gym, that search term is down 75% all time. Uh, and if you follow the red line here, it peaked a number of years later um, as people started looking for more CrossFit gyms. And it was like 2019 here and then COVID happened and just crushed it. And it still has never recovered and then just continued on a downward trend to what is right now as of November, 2023, the all time low outside of the COVID uh, scare here, the shutdowns, right? And both are... 25% of what they've ever been, right? So, you know, and this is what CrossFit saying that they're doing all this stuff and all this marketing stuff over the last couple of years, right? It's clearly, clearly not having any influence on, on this graph, right? Um, no one, I mean, if you go to CrossFit, you know, and look at its followers and all that stuff, like um, a lot of its people that already do it. Right. And I, I'm not going to malls and seeing CrossFit stuff. I'm not going, there's nowhere in the mainstream seeing a lot of like 
CrossFit stuff. They're, they're just, there's not, it's not out there. And the word of mouth isn't like it used to be, right? Like these Google search trends, if I go to just CrossFit, this is like pretty accurate to the rate at which like people are talking about this stuff. And if you look at like relevance and like movies and like mentions of CrossFit and the mainstream, like a lot of that peaked in like 2015, 2016, you know, people were talking, you know, talking about and it being cool and all that stuff. Right. Um, and generationally, like millennials are starting to age up. Right. And if you look at like the average age of most CrossFit gyms, like it's not 20 year olds anymore. It's not 25 year olds. It's not, you know, I was in my twenties when I started CrossFit. I don't know a lot of 20 year olds that, you know, are starting CrossFit. They're doing a lot of other things. They're, you know, especially Gen Z coming up, they're not going to do fitness movements are almost generational, right? Like if you look at what was popular before millennials came of age, which is most CrossFit affiliate owners, most CrossFit affiliate owners are between the age of 30 and 45, which is like, that's mostly the millennial generation. That's like older, you know, older age group millennials. I think millennials right now are 25 to early forties. And there's some Gen Z's in there, right? And of course, like there are some older CrossFit gym owners too that that had experience, but most CrossFit affiliate owners I, I know are around the same age as me. They're like 40, 35, 40. And who is most of their client base? People between 30 and 45, like the same age. And we also know this because we've run like millions of dollars in ads for CrossFit gyms with what we do at Big Little Gyms. We've helped gyms run like millions and millions of dollars of ads, millions of clicks, tons of data. Um, and we've we've analyzed that data and like the ads at, at the target audience below 28 years old is like not, they do not click on the ads for, for these, these CrossFit gyms. They're not interested. The cost per lead will be a fortune. Um, whereas like eight years ago, 2015, I started running Facebook ads for my CrossFit gym and the numbers were different. Like I was able to market to people in their twenties and that's because the people that were in their mid twenties then are now in their mid thirties now. Right. So like CrossFit's aging up with the population of people that started CrossFit years ago and started these gyms. Um, and of course there's exceptions to that. Cause I know I'm going to get someone, I know I'm going to get some gym owner that responds to this and says, I'm 65 and I've got a gym full of 23 year olds. Awesome. Like I'm not saying that that doesn't exist. I'm just saying that's most of probably the 15,000 affiliates, right? At least the ones that aren't like a school that's paying for affiliation or a police department. Like I think a lot of police departments pay for CrossFit affiliation. Um, right. And that's, you know, it's not a, it's not a commercial CrossFit gym, right? It's not a, you know, one that's open to the public. Um, so, you know, that's just looking at this, this search, uh, stuff here. That's kind of what we see, um, here is, is what's going on here. So there's that. Now let's look at a few gyms, right? So we've got a, quite a few successful CrossFit gyms right now. Uh, I'm going to pull up their data. Um, this is CrossFit diehard. This is a CrossFit gym in Daytona beach, Florida, right? Uh, city of the population of whatever, 30, 40,000 people, very seasonal, uh, gym because they have like Daytona 500. They are in Florida. Um, they're also in like one of these cities where like a lot of people have moved to in the last couple of years, but they're very transient. A lot of people don't want to stay there because it's not a city with like a big metropolis and a lot of jobs. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's an interesting town, right? But this is relevant for a lot of gyms because a lot of gyms in towns like this that aren't in like big metropolises. And if I go to their performance here and just kind of show, you know, this, this gym, by the way, this gym does, uh, you know, I think he does in the 30,000 to $40,000 revenue range per month. Um, great gym owner runs a good gym, has a team. I think he's got a couple hundred members. And when he joined us in 20, uh, in 2020, it was right after COVID hit. And his gym was struggling. I think he was, he was down and losing money and he's grown using our stuff. And you can see like he gets, you know, for, you know, just since June of this year, this is roughly the last six months, 4,300 searches. And this is a gym that's worked very hard on this using our playbooks and using all of our checklists and using all of our SOPs for doing this stuff. You can see his search results, you know, the words gym are a thousand plus, you know, almost 25% of that search. Uh, the word CrossFit is third. It's only 10% of his search, right? CrossFit near me, it's less than 10% of his search. So, so between the two, CrossFit and CrossFit near me, it's, you know, 15 to 16% of his total search volume, which is meaningful, right? Like it is meaningful, right? And I'd certainly say whatever $3,000 a year is worth paying to have that, right? Whether it's worth more than that is kind of up to you based on your situation. Um, but really like for him, my point of showing you this is like, you know, most of his search traffic is coming from broader searches that have nothing to do with CrossFit. 
because if I go down here, I can see more of the searches and you can see, um, you know, the number of searches here that aren't CrossFit related, but there's definitely some, you know, so there is value here. Now that being said, let me show you a gym that used to be affiliated and um, right here, uh, next level performance. They are gym here actually in Scottsdale, Arizona, not far from me, that gym owner. I'm good friends with this gym owner, Michael Anders. And this gym does great. He makes a lot of money. He moved away from CrossFit a number of years ago. He changed his methodology. He's not really doing CrossFit and calling it something else. He's got a different philosophy. I think he does have some group classes that are, you know, functional fitness related, but I think he's got his own methodology. Um, but you know, he, it's funny is his gym doesn't, he, his gym used to be CrossFit PHX. He's no longer CrossFit PHX, hasn't been CrossFit PHX for years. You know, he still shows up even though he's no longer CrossFit affiliated years later. Uh, he's got 71 clicks for CrossFit PHX, right? Um, and then CrossFit near me. So like, even though he's de-affiliated number of years later, he's still getting the benefit of having been CrossFit affiliated, even though he dropped it. So for those of you that are thinking about dropping the CrossFit affiliation, you're probably going to retain most of the benefit. Cause here's the thing is like, you don't have to have the words CrossFit in your name to benefit from CrossFit keyword search. What CrossFit is going to, or what Google is going to do is they're going to look at a lot of your re like reviews, the reviews people leave. And if you've got years and years and years of reviews on Google mentioning CrossFit and having been named CrossFit PHX and all that stuff is in those reviews, which no one could do anything about. CrossFit can't ask you to take those down because those are reviews from when you were a paying affiliate. And uh, so you're still gonna rank heavily for those words in your area. And he still crushes it for people looking for CrossFit in the market, right? You see most of his searches are for CrossFit, right? Um, definitely his biggest search is looks like for his own company and yeah, next level performance. Those are his biggest searches for sure. Next level, right? People seeking him out directly. Um, but CrossFit still holds a lot of weight for him and he's not affiliated and doesn't want to be like, he's changed his methodology. He's got a different view on it but without, without knowing he's still benefiting hugely from that having been affiliated. So for those of you that think about dropping affiliate, it's not like if you drop your affiliation, you're going to lose all those benefits. You're actually going to retain all the benefits because the thing that Google ranks on the most if you're worried about the SEO side, which is one of the things that Google likes to, or CrossFit likes to kind of pitch on is like, oh, you get the SEO from being a CrossFit affiliate. It's like, well, you already have the SEO from being a CrossFit affiliate if you've been one for a number of years, right? And honestly, like going forward, if you're a new affiliate and thinking about being a CrossFit affiliate, like most of the SEO isn't going to be built on it just having the name in it. It's going to probably be built more on uh, the content and what's on your website and um, that stuff being built the right way to, to build authority, the reviews people leave about you and what people say in the reviews is actually more valuable than what you call yourself because Google knows that that can be hacked, right? Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and look at a couple other gyms. Like, this is Elevate St. Pete. This is another gym. Um, this is a gym that used to be a CrossFit affiliate. This used to be CrossFit Ele Elevate and they're based out of St. Petersburg, Florida. This is this gym dropped being affiliated a number of years ago and uh, you know they are as successful as ever. They're a client of ours. They've been crushing it with us. I think this gym does like forty, fifty thousand dollars months, and um, they honestly don't get any clicks from CrossFit anymore. And their gym is just as successful as it's ever been. And um, so this is, you know, been pretty effective. Um, they just joined us like I think it might be like a month or two ago. So this this click volume isn't based off of like most recent, but there is, um, you know, what we're seeing and. Um, see OL fitness this is a CrossFit gym based in Texas. They are a CrossFit affiliate, but they actually don't even leave with their CrossFit branding. They leave with, they leave with OL fitness, um, which I think that should be the focus of every gym owner. Like part of you being a business owner is being good at those five facets of business, right? Being good at, um, not just fulfillment, right? Like a lot of people start a CrossFit gym and they think I'm going to get my L1. And if I'm really, really good coach, people are going to show up and do business with me. That's not how it works. But that's just one of five things you need to be good at to be good at business. In business, that's just fulfillment. You also need to be good at sales, marketing, operations, and finance. There's five components to running a good business. And if you're only good at fulfillment, that will get you somewhere, right? Like you'll probably get some clients and retain some clients. And you'll probably get some word of mouth, but that won't scale generally won't scale fast enough to offset offset the point offset to the point to where when you start losing some clients as clients naturally churn from moving for other reasons it's probably not going to scale fast enough to continue to grow and that's where most of them get stuck right they get to a point where like you know for the first handful of years they're getting five new members a month 
until you have 100 members, right? And then when they had 100, 100, 100 members a month, they're losing whatever, five members a month. And maybe and the funny thing is they don't lose them all at once. They lose them, you know, two every month, one every month until the end of the year or the summer comes and they lose like 20. And then if you average it out over the year, they're using five, they're losing five a month. They have a 5% churn rate. So you're growing at a rate of 5% and losing at a churn rate. We call that net zero churn. So then your gym, your gym gets stuck at 100 members, right? Or 70 members or whatever that number is. This is why it happens. Now, CrossFit OIL, this gym here, he, uh, you know, this gym here, like they don't bleed with the CrossFit branding, but they show up even though they don't say CrossFit on much of their stuff. They don't, and they don't give all, you know, it's funny is I'll see a lot of CrossFit gyms like, they're just advertising CrossFit. That's all they're talking about is how CrossFit's so great. Instead of talking about why they are good at what they do, right? It's like they they are just going to play up CrossFit instead of playing up what they do at their particular business and how they fulfill and like speaking more directly versus essentially being like just peddling and chilling CrossFit, right? Like that's not what you should do. This gym does a great example of that. They, they post a lot of really good content on social media. They've got a great following. And uh, when they joined us, this is this gym here. When they joined us, was doing fourteen thousand dollars months, just a little less than two years ago. And this gym just won their fifty k club award. Their fifty k club award is the hammer for you guys that don't know. Is the hammer right? So this uh, this is what we give all our gyms that cross fifty k a month in revenue. We've had dozens of CrossFit gyms win it that started with us being at seventy members and making five thousand dollars a month and breaking even or even losing money um and they were crossfit gyms before and they were crossfit gyms after right it has nothing to do with what they were called right so just to show some examples that like and ultimately this is more about less about like uh taking anything away from crossfit um and more or less making it about what you're doing for your business because a lot of the complaints i'm seeing and if i just start going through some of these again you know it's about what is crossfit provided for us well it's like the deal is you pay the money and you get to use the name Right, that's the deal, and they're going to provide you some extra value by doing some like regional meetups, uh, some Zoom calls. Uh, I guess CrossFit affiliate programming is included, which, uh, from what I understand, has been a bomb for the most part. You know, CrossFit did that as a cash grab a number of years ago to offer programming, so the so it wouldn't start going elsewhere. People started using it, and I think like less than one percent of affiliates use it and and use it or something. They don't they don't. From what I understand, it's not a success, but they're throwing that in as a value add, you know, and then they're throwing in a uh, they're bundling in, you know, credit towards your L2 because they want you to have your L2 now, right? Um, and then, because uh, naturally, if you have to get your L2, now you got to spend even more money, right? So now you're spending more like $6,000 instead of 4500 or whatever the cost is for that, right? And um, so that's, you know, that's kind of what we're seeing here. Now, if we go through some of the more of these here, uh, this gym owner here is not happy. I just got this too. They will lose more affiliates than they expect. We have stuck with CrossFit since COVID. Now... I actually think they are going to probably lose what they expect. I think they're going to probably lose that 10 to 15% of affiliates, right? And it's going to be a good number. But like I said, they're expecting that. Um, they're doing the math. And if there's, and, the, and I don't know if they're, who knows if they're good at business or not. A lot of, there's a lot of big VC and private equity companies that don't make good decisions. And this, they could, maybe they didn't do good math. And maybe they're thinking nobody's going to leave. But if they're smart, they did their math and they know that like 10 or 15% of people are going to leave. And they know that they're also going to get that 26% increase in overall revenue by allowing that to happen, right? So I don't, if they're smart, I don't think they're scared of that. You know what I mean? Um, so, you know, that being said, you know, um, I don't think that I agree that they're going to lose more than they expect, but they're going to lose some. I do think a lot of affiliates are going to talk a big game and not go anywhere. Uh, if I'm honest with you, I think half the people in here talking are going to complain because the same thing happened with the Glassman stuff a number of years ago where um, a lot of people, a lot of people took issue with that. Uh, people didn't even like Glassman and here they are still paying CrossFit a number of years later. Right. Some did leave and some did affiliate affiliate, but they're still, I, I mean, I've been in these groups for a long time and there's specific people I know by name that said they were going to de-affiliate and then never did. And it was, that was probably two thirds of the people that said they were going to. You know, if I'm honest. So, um, yeah. And then uh, if we go through this, um, you know, they're doing their town hall meetings too, right? Uh, we got that too. Headed into our 10th year, putting together an affiliate fee now, but that won't be happening. Uh, CrossFit brand was already dying. Should probably have done this last year. I agree. I think CrossFit, if they were going to, 
I think they should have done this back in like 2021 because CrossFit gyms saw a big bounce back from COVID. Uh, gyms in general, all gyms did, all businesses did. In fact, like you know, 2019 uh, leading into 2020, like a lot of gyms were on the backside. You know, as I showed you earlier with the gr Google Trend Graph, you know, they were on the way down, like and down, 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 already down 75 percent. And then COVID hit and pretty much and in, in almost killed every gym. But the gyms that survived, and we know because we were working with a lot of gyms at this time, saw a huge bounce back in the market. There was a big bounce back. All businesses did. Whenever you stimulate the economy like that, with all that cash, it starts getting spent. People don't save it. They go and spend it on things that they've been wanting to do. And that's what happened. There's also all that PPP money that gyms got. Um, there are a lot of things that went the right way. And really, that was the perfect time to increase rates because like you're getting ahead of inflation, people were making money. But now, as of the last year, with the economy adjust, having adjusted back, it was about August 2022, the economy kind of started to adjust back the other direction with the, inflate, with the interest rates being hiked. And a lot of gyms, especially during this season, I mean, talk about timing. I mean, this Thanksgiving, December, you know, we work with, like I said, hundreds and hundreds of gyms and we keep a pretty tight, uh, you know, uh, view on what's going on and, and keeping a pulse on things. And there's definitely been like, you know, I would say more gyms getting cancellations during this winter, November, December than I've seen in the last, you know, pretty much since 2019, um, more gyms, you know, and that's because, and be honest with you, a lot of those gyms like have brought it upon themselves and that like a lot of gyms, a lot of gym owners just ride the wave, right? They, when stuff is working, they don't work hard. They just let it come in and they're like, okay, good. The market's working. It's all good. They don't know what they don't know. They don't know that, how much they're not doing. And then when things calm down, they realize how much they've left on the table. Now they want to go work hard. Now they want to panic. Now they want to put the work in. It's one of my biggest gripes is like, we provide so much to our clients in our program and most of them use it and get a lot of results, but we still just like in, in anything, you got people and we have them at our, we've had them in our gyms too. You guys have them at your gyms. There's people that like, you know, uh, everybody's, you know, we all know these people in our lives, right? I, I kind of related to like people who are unhealthy, right? Like they're, you know, when they're young and, and, um, young and able there's you know they'll eat like crap they won't think about their health they won't think about their wellness but then when they find out they got type 2 diabetes and they're no longer feeling very healthy now they want to go do something about it right that's human behavior that's also most business owners that's also most gym owners and you can literally put the roadmap to success in front of them which we do here at big little gyms and some of them despite signing up and paying money and jumping aboard to do it and giving them all the accountability and coaching and guidance to do it still won't do it right because you know, if the market's just, if things are comfortable for them, they're not going to get uncomfortable and do a little bit of work. Right. And so, you know, because we have plenty of gyms having PR months too. We had in November, we had a couple of gyms win their 50 K club award that have been growing over the last couple of years with us. So, you know, um, there's, there's, you know, a lot to that. So, uh, OGs are seeing a huge increase, you know, there's gyms paying, still paying, uh, 500, dollars from back in the early days and it looks like they're getting a big increase too um some of those og gyms that were promised the grandfathered rate forever um i don't know how that deal works if that was really written somewhere um but there's definitely room for a class action lawsuit there if it is uh if a bunch of those og affiliates that are they were promised a 500 hundred dollar rate if that's in writing somewhere in a contract somewhere that says you're going to get that rate forever then um there's a potential for a, a legit class action lawsuit there. But if it, if that was just word, if that was just spoken word or, Hey, we're honoring your deal or we're doing you a favor, then obviously like there's nothing there. And, you know, I wouldn't expect something to say at $500 a year forever. Um, you know, going back to the last couple here and then we'll wrap this video up. Uh, this is what I'm wondering. This is what I'm wondering about. No fee to go monthly as opposed to the way it's a $50 fee a month to go monthly in the past. So they're basically saying you can do a monthly payments, right? And that's probably what they're counting on is that. Um, and then Koi here said increased enough to make up for the ones that would be priced out. Exactly. And then some. We did that math earlier, right? So, you know, they're okay with losing 15% because they're going to gain 26% in total revenue over and above that on the remaining ones, right? It's a typical, this is a typical tech play, guys. This is what they do. You know what I mean? They get... You buy a company, you increase value, you increase, you get adoption, you increase price, a certain percentage leave, but the price increase is great enough. You cut deep enough one time to where it offsets the loss twice over, right? So like in a way, the people leaving, people staying are paying for the ones that are leaving, right? And then, then some. Um, 
let's see. We got any more here? Ours is going from 2000 to 20, 4500. Cap is a cap, cap, crap program. CrossFit doesn't do as much for, the, for getting people in the door as they think. I agree. They don't. And they're not going to, right? Um, there's just no way with a, at the big corporate level that they think they can influence marketing. It's going to have any effects, any effect grassroots wise. Or, you know, offering them a micro site on CrossFit.com off the affiliate map. It's like, it's the same thing franchises do. Because you ever look at like Orange Series website, they do the same thing. They have a map and it lead gens through that map page. You know, and this is with those franchises spending like $3,000 a month on ads to drive traffic into those. They still get terrible lead gen, right? A lot of franchises are hurting right now. Like Orange Theory, I consulted recently for an Orange Theory. Uh, franchise holder, one that owns the rights to 85 locations in Texas, Florida, and Washington, some of the biggest markets, and they are down like 30%, right? Um, because same thing, there's a curve here that's they're, we're coming off of, and I'm gonna and I'm gonna say what I've been saying in that group fitness, you know, uh, is ripe for disruption, and it's not gonna be the same companies that disrupted the market, and let, it never is in tech, it never is, it's never the same company that re disrupts. There's only one that's ever done it, and it was a big deal, and that's Apple. Right, Apple and Apple didn't really disrupt. It's more or less they started the personal computing niche, niche, then they got kind of beat, and then they came back and disrupted it. And that's only because they got brought Steve Jobs back, which is really, really, really rare. That's not that rarely ever happens, right? And a lot of people think that by Greg Glassman coming back, it's going to do the same thing. I do think some affiliates would return if they brought Greg Glassman back, um, but I also think just as many wouldn't care. And I also don't think it's enough because, you know, Apple sells Apple disrupted by literally building the iPhone, right? The thing that revolutionized computing as we know it, you know, like bringing Greg Glassman back to sell the same thing, not a different thing like Apple did, isn't going to revolutionize anything. You know what I mean? Like it's not exciting enough. Um, and then looks like in 2024, they will get 13 to $26 million in increased fees. Yeah, exactly. That, that lines up pretty good with the math we did. Um, and then last one here, we did, uh, I think we all received that email by now. Luckily mine won't renew until October. My initial thoughts so far, nothing they've done has brought me a single member. How is offering $500 credit for a level one? Also raising the standards for owners and coaches going up $1,500 a year only raises member pricing. Um, this is great. We'll have to raise prices too. It's probably doing business. Yeah, no, I agree. And I agree with that. I think, uh, you know, having a regular nominal increase, uh, you know, most businesses, most subscription-based business models raise their prices three to 5% per year, right? This is obviously, for some gyms, this is like, you know, if you're a $500 a month OG affiliate from 15 years ago, you're going up 10, you're going up a thousand percent, not 5%. If you're paying 3K, which was the rate, and you're going to 4,500, that's going up 50%, right? Now, given, yeah, you're offsetting for all these years in the past, but you can't ask for money you didn't give value for, right? Like, yeah, sure. If you, you know, yeah, 100, you know, 50% increase because we never raised rates. But it's like also at the same time, CrossFit never really, you know, increased its value to the, to the, to the gym owner. If anything, the value of the CrossFit brand has gone down, right? If you're selling a royalty, you're selling licensing to a name, the value is the name. Why you would ask for a price increase is because the value of the name has gone up, right? In this situation here, it's actually gone down since 20, since the peak of 2013. Right, less people. The school search trends are down seventy five percent. My family, when I go to family dinner, doesn't care about CrossFit. <laughs> no one's talking about it. It's not coming up, you know what I mean, in, in conversation. Right, when we're talking about fitness and stuff like that, like it's not a mainstream conversation as much anymore. Right, just being real. I'm not trying to, you know. I love. I have friends at CrossFit that are, that are in the circles at CrossFit. Some of the regional reps are friends. You know, hopefully I don't make any of them mad, but it, it's just real right um last couple here i would not necessarily advocate 50 percent increase but as far as i can see my region affiliate fees have been consistent in the last 10 years um no business can afford to not raise prices over a decade and let inflation eat up revenue i definitely agree that they have to offset for for inflation that's definitely uh fair there um and then i'm, I'm okay with the increase so you know it's really divided it's either people are like okay with it and or like no, like this guy, you know, it pretty much goes back and forth, right? This guy's like, okay, I'm okay with it. This one here, I'm not okay with it. You know, I'd love to hear what you have to say. I'd love to hear, you know, wherever you're watching this video at, I'm going to post this on uh, social medias, on the on the social medias, you know, in the comment section. Tell me where you sit. Do you think it's worth it for 
CrossFit affiliate owners to stay a CrossFit affiliate to now pay forty five hundred dollars a month when they were paying five hundred or a thousand or two thousand or three thousand dollars. Not a, I'm sorry, not a month, but a year. Is is this a fair increase for forty five hundred dollars from say three thousand or two thousand for what they're for what CrossFit's giving, right? And ideally, I love to hear from actual gym owners, right? If you're not a gym owner, I'd love to hear your perspective too, from the outside looking in. You know, uh, you know what you think. You know, is CrossFit relevant? If you're not a CrossFit affiliate owner, but say you you do CrossFit, or say you used to do CrossFit, or say you're just a fitness person, a fitness fanatic. You know, I'd love to hear your your views on it. That's important, right? People on the outside looking in. Do you think that this is a good move, right? Because this has really got things shaken up. And this is, you know, just looking at this page here, this is just on a Facebook group. If I go to Instagram, you know, it's getting ugly. I think it even gets uglier on those platforms. Um, and it looks like it's just as, it looks like it's just as back and forth, you know, um, based off what our affiliate fees have done for us so far, you're going to need to prove more value before we cough up more. That's from CrossFit MYO, Model City CrossFit. We've been affiliate eight plus years. I paid 3,000 each of those years. Over the eight years, we've increased our rate three times. I can see no difference between our rate increase to members. To cover the rising costs in HQ's rate increase over the last few years, HQ's rolled out the playbook, affiliate owner starter kit, cap programming. So yeah, the, and obviously those things were built to uh, build the value for the price increase, right? So that's why they did that. Um, so they're kind of defending that. They're saying, okay, cool. Um, plus side is a 500 credit for L1 or L2 um, there. And then, so you know, it sounds like they've kind of priced it to where it's really one way or the other. Uh, this is unrealistic. This is a huge price increase. I think the biggest thing is, is like, if you're one of these affiliates that's in a very good position, you're in a great market, things have gone well for you, um, you know, and, and a lot of gyms that have opened up on the right corner in the right town at the right time, you know, we'll give a lot of the credit to CrossFit when in reality, we work with gyms of all types of brands that had success more because of their location and when they opened up and where they opened up and how they've run their business more so than what they're called. But they'll give all the glory to CrossFit, which happens when you have like these evangelical, almost like cult-like uh, followings, which CrossFit definitely has with a lot of its affiliate owners. A lot of affiliates owners are the most ev evangelical about CrossFit. And we'll just give all the credit to them when in reality it was their own doing. They need to take more of their own credit. And, um, you know, the truth, the reality is, is like 90% of the CrossFit affiliates I, I work with probably don't have $4,500 a year to pay it. That's the big thing, right? It's like they just don't have it to pay it. Now they're going to get them to pay it. And uh, if they're going to continue to provide the service the same way, it's like, where's the value going to be returned, right? Because people don't want to spend money to just make the same amount of money back, right? So if you're like, okay, pay me $1,500 more a month and we'll, or a year, and we promise you'll get $1,500 more in business because we're going to go set up a micro site that gets you like three clients a year. Um, you know, that's not a great proposition. If I invest money in something, I want to see a three, five, 10 X return on that money. That's how it works in business is you spend the money to see a multiplier back over a period of time. Um, Coach Frankie here says Don Fall should step down. Uh, D Kuhn should be fired. Grau should be fired. So there's kind of calling for uh, some of the uh, CrossFit HQ uh, leadership to step down. Again, all these people, you know, while Don Fall is a CrossFit guy, again, he's also a CEO whose job is, or a CEO or whatever he is, his job is to get uh, CrossFit in a position to be acquired, right? And to maximize revenue, you know? Level two, okay, but more and more and more money and with large increase like this, just for affiliation, we'll only encourage more copycat CrossFit gyms all over the world. It forces CrossFit gym owners to hike prices again on members in an already ridiculous overpriced market and risk member drop off, only affecting the gym owner, whereas a loyalty uh, offer for five, eight, 10 year affiliates, this should all be part of the rollout, unacceptable. Uh, not a smart move here by this gym. So you see all these are CrossFit gyms re responding. I'm all for the L2 requirement. However, that increase from my small little box puts me in a very hard position. I'm fine with the fee increase if you can provide adequate reasoning for why they're doing what they're doing with the money and how they will help affiliates moving further along. CrossFit HQ in my 13 years mostly just takes but never gives back to us affiliates. A lot of affiliate owners feel this way, unfortunately. Um, I was affiliated with both my affiliates. My second affiliate, we actually dropped our affiliation for a couple of years and it wasn't about, about money. We actually were making a lot of money. We had a gym that was doing like $80,000 months. We were doing very, very well. It was honestly because we just didn't see the value in paying for affiliation. We had built our gym so they would stand, the branding would stand on its own separate of what it's call, called. Because at the end of the day, it was us just being the most trusted fitness provider in the area, not trying to be the best CrossFit gym in the area or trying to be the CrossFit representative in the area, right? Like the represent, representative CrossFit affiliate in the area. We weren't trying to fill that space. We were trying to be the best fitness provider in the area. 
And before too long, like we were just known as Spark. We weren't even known as Spark CrossFit. And when we changed our name to Spark Cross Fitness for a couple of years, business only went up. Um, and that's because we had built our own, we had built a moat around our business. It didn't matter what we were called. We had a line of people waiting outside the door to work with us. And if you have a, built, a, a line of people waiting to work with you, it doesn't matter what's happening on the outside. It doesn't matter what you're called. It doesn't matter how you're positioned in the market because at the end of the day, like you have your own line waiting for you at the door, right? So really interesting. Uh, and it just continues on, uh, you know, 50% increase far beyond the cost of inflation. Maybe HQ would like to share its balance sheet to explain where the expenses went up. I'd like to see that too. Uh, I'd like to see, you know, since they're kind of like, you know, and that's what they kind of, I think with how they did their price increase, if you're going to ask your members to do a price increase, you don't justify by saying, oh, you know, especially if you're already a successful business, if you know CrossFit is, it makes a lot of money. CrossFit HQ. If you're a successful gym, like we were a successful gym, we raised our prices. We just told people we were raising our prices because we were raising our prices. We didn't justify, we didn't use the justification that like, oh, we need it to run a, um, to continue to run a successful business. Like it, it wasn't, we didn't say, oh, we to, you know, we didn't try to make, you know, we would say like, the costs have gone up, right? Cause that was re real. But it, we were trying to say that like, this is to save our business or to position ourselves as if like, this is somehow like going to be the difference maker for us, right? Cause it wasn't. And people, people see right through that. And that's what, that's what these gym owners are seeing through that, right? That verbiage, I just don't like it. Um, I wouldn't like it no matter who it was, whether it was CrossFit HQ or a gym owner or another business owner or myself. It's just not a great way to, you know, position that, right? So yeah, that's my thought, guys. I'd love to hear what you have to say about this. This is a big deal. This is really uh, going to shake things up, I think, for the next year for CrossFit HQ and CrossFit gym owners. Um, I've seen more CrossFit gyms go out of business in the last year uh, because of, you know, what we're seeing is uh, rent increases have gone up considerably in almost everywhere in the country in the last couple of years. And as those rent re increase renewals are coming up for a lot of gyms, that's already hurting their business. Um, at the same time, you know, the increase in interest rates have affected the economy. So we're like just less people are spending money, more gyms are seeing cancellations. And then, uh, you know, we're seeing this increase, right? And it's like, if every single vendor you're doing business with is squeezing the lemon a little bit before too long, you just don't want to do it anymore, right? And it's, uh, you know, unfortunate. And don't get me wrong, a lot of these gym owners need to be taking matters into their own hands and taking ownership over their results. If you're just sitting back expecting CrossFit to do things for you, you're wrong, right? You should be over here working with a company like Big Little Gyms where we're going to give you the tools to actually grow and work your business. And you do the work, right? You do the work, right? Um, you know, uh, stop buying guru stuff, trying to promise you unrealistic results that you can't even manager handler don't even want to do the work for right some of these things so that's it guys i'd love to hear your take on it i'd love to see see what you have to say about this and uh, if you guys have anything to add please add it i'd love to hear do you think this is smart are you if you're an affiliate owner are you going to stay affiliated do you think this is worth it do you think it's not worth it do you think they should have asked more do you think the timing of this was good if you're not an affiliate owner or a gym owner i'd love to hear your perspective too from the outside maybe even CrossFit gym owners that are former affiliate owners that are not affiliate owners anymore, or even people that are not even CrossFit affiliated at all or do anything related to fitness. I'd love to hear people that are in other fitness realms. Um, what do you think what CrossFit is doing in the fitness world right now with its affiliates is the smart move? And do you think it's going to benefit them or hurt them? Do you think CrossFit's dead? Do you think it's going to come back? Do you think it's got legs? Love to hear what you guys have to say. Talk to you guys soon. Bye.